Welcome back to Geometric Geodesy. Now, we are going to discuss the topic 1 of this course, which is the introduction to Geodesy, its history, branches, and development. This is for the authors and contributors, and for the copyright notice. For the outline of the presentation, we have 5 parts. The part 1 will be the definition of Geodesy, part 2, the problem of Geodesy, part 3, Branches and Subdivisions of Geodesy Part 4, Historical Development of Geodesy and Part 5, The Impacts and Applications of Geodesy For the intended learning outcomes, after this lecture and exercises, you, the students, must have defined the Geodesy, explain the concepts of Geodesy and, and identify the different branches of Geodesy and their interrelationships. Differentiate geometric geodesy from astronomical geodesy, physical geodesy, and satellite geodesy. Illustrate and explain the different models of the Earth. Identify the impacts and the different applications of geodesy in relation to geodetic engineering profession. So let's go now to, to the part 1 of this lecture, which is the definition of geodesy. Before we go to the proper uh, definition of geodesy, there is a question that may arouse into our mind when we study about geodesy. This is, what is the real shape of the earth? What if the earth is this one, a perfect sphere? Or it might be this one, a hemisphere? Or what if the earth is a pear shape? Or, what if the Earth looks this one? And lastly, what if the Earth is this one? Siguro na yung mga hulog, no? If ever ka na ang atuang shape sa Earth. Well, that might be answered by you upon completing this subject. Next is, we are going to see or we are going to discover now that in our everyday living, geodesy is part of it. Example, are you familiar with this one? Yes, that's a Google Maps. Or, kisa na nga kadulaan eh, Pokemon Go. Sa so, mga Pokemon lovers diha ah. Or, have you, uh, are you familiar with this one? Yes, that's a satellite. Or, have you ever seen a person operating this kind of instrument. By the way, that is a GNSS receiver. Well, if you are familiar with those pictures, then Geodesy is part of your everyday living. Another example is, have you experienced this one? Riding a bus. Of course, sa mga um, dili taga Butuan or outside Butuan City or siguro tanan man siguro mo is naka sakay na ani bus na so as you can observe there is a speed limit that was fixed by the company the bachelor uh, bachelor express enable that the, dri that the driver will be alarmed if the uh, speed of the uh, bus is exceed to the maximum level mo alarm na siya sa uh, driver that ang iyang speed di is kusugra so that also serve as the monitoring by the uh, company for those driver na mga abusado. No? Bisan o kanyang gabi ina kung sugya po magpadagan. So, safety first, ikang. Or, have you experienced this one or using this one? Maps me or Google Maps. Labi na sa mga lugar na dili mo suhito or first time ninyo naka-add to anang lugar. So, naka- Mag-try man siya taong look for another application or look for mapping application. Enable us to become uh, familiar kung ahadapit agihan, ang street, uh, padulong, ang, padulong sa isa ka lugar. So, that's it. And, um, i-grab. No? Application na grab. So, this is a application to book taxis. Labi na sa mga naamo sa metro cities like Cebu, Manila, 
and even Butuan City. Or, basi na na nakatry sa inyo uh, DRIA o gamit ani Transic. It's a local application that is for Butuan City and this is um, uh, discovered or this is made by the uh, students of Caraga State University. Transic. Mura siya grab, ang kalainan lang is sikad ang ibuk dili tax. So again, if you are um, using those application or if you are have experienced those um, situation, then Jodice is part now of your everyday living. It might be nga wala lang mo na nabantayan, but yes, Jodice exists. So for the proper um, definition of Jodice, it means that um, Jodice is one of the earth sciences and it came from the word um, Latin word Judaica. Jeo means earth and the dayen which is to divide. In short, Jodice is dividing the earth. There are other familiar earth sciences or Jeo sciences um, including na of course the Jodice. So other sci earth sciences are geography. Now, geography it describes what you find where on the earth. Like for example, land and water, the climate, the vegetation, and man's habitat in relation to this. Next geosciences is geology, which is the study of the rock formations and its history. Next is geomorphology, which describes landforms and their evolutions. And lastly, the geophysics, which studies the physical forces that shape the earth. Geodesy is less well known, although it is the oldest of the geosciences compared to geology, geomorphology, geography, and the others. So what does Geodesy do? The following is an in initiation into the mysteries of geodetic concepts. So Geodesy is centered and the three major topics which consist of the size and shape of the earth, the gravity field of the earth, and lastly is per point positioning. Another technical definition of geodesy is according to the classical uh, definition of FR, FR Helmert. According to him, geodesy is the science of measurement and mapping of the earth's surface. Another definition from the Judetic Glossary or NGS 2009, Geodesy can be defined as designs that concerned with, with determining the size and shape of the Earth. Or it is designs that locates position on the Earth and determines the Earth's gravity field. Another definition from Smith that it is designs that determines the figure of the Earth and their interrelation of selected points on its surface by other direct or indirect techniques. It is a branch of applied mathematics that includes observation for determining the size and shape of the Earth and defining the coordinate system for three-dimensional positioning, the variation of phenom phenomena near to or on the surface such as gravity, the tides, earth rotation, crustal movement, and deflection of the plumb line. In other countries, specifically in European community, geodesy is used no, as a term or umbrella term to describe all the activities like uh, land valuation, land management, cartography or the art of map making, setting out surveys like uh, Aztec surveys, route surveys, underground surveys like mine surveying, national mapping, boundary surveys or property surveys, land information systems, and all other activities except geodesy in its tradition. Now, sir, asa man musulod si geodesy sa atong profession? Ngano'ng kinahanglan man ta mag-study o geodesy sa atong kurso? So, I'm going to discuss but let's start with 
the definition of the geodetic engineering or surveying. So, what's the surveying of geodetic engineering, sir? Like, sudut lang ko ani nga, nga course, but what's the definition ana niya? According to the definition, geodetic engineering is that branch of engineering that deals with the collection and measurement of spatial data above, on, or below the surface of the Earth using the appropriate technologies like atong mga instrument na ipanggamit. So that is the appropriate technologies. Or it is the scientific and methodological processing and management of this data for the production of spatial information systems, maps, plans, charts, and other documents. So, basta nagtuo mo nga si geodetic engineering or si geodetic engineer is tamal lang sa pagkuha sa data nagkamali mo. No? It's because part of the work of the geodetic engineer is to process and manage those acquired data from the surface of the earth. And process it para mahi mo siyang maps, plans, charts, and other documents para magamit sa uban and user. Another definition of surveying and geodetic engineering is the acquisition, processing, rendering, dissemination, and management of spatial information on or near the surface of the earth. So that's according to Derenie. So, Unsa na ang spatial information, sir? Kaya balik-balik naman sa definition. Nagbalik-balik man yung word sa definition sa surveying and genetic engineering. When we talk about spatial information, it means that it is the location of the information from the known three-dimensional space or ang nangitawag na itong X, Y, and Z. So, the information is geographically referenced in three-dimensional coordinate system. So that's another definition for spatial information. So much for the definition of geodetic engineering and surveying. So I guess and I hope no, na nasabta ninyo ang definition sa geodetic engineering and surveying. It's because um, it is discussed in your lower GEs like G100 and G101. So to connect geodesy in our um, profession which is geodetic engineering, let us recall what is the definition of geodesy. So since um, genetic engineering is the study of uh, it's a branch of science that is studying on the acquisition of the spatial information now let's recall for the geodesy geodesy again is the science and measurement and mapping of the earth's surface the science concerned with determining the size and shape of the earth the science that locates position on the earth and determines the earth's gravity field Another one is the science that determines the figure of the earth and its interrelationship of selected points, selected points on its surface by either direct or indirect techniques. And it is also the determining the size and shape of the earth and defining coordinate system for three-dimensional positioning. Upon the discussion of geodetic engineering definition and recall the definition of geodesy. So, any idea on how these two things are being related? So, okay, wala man mo sa kong atubangan ka ron. Ako na lang tubagon. Again, as geodetic engineers, we perform different types of surveying, surveying right? So, kung malaki mo na mong geodetic engineers po hon, we will do this kind or these different types of surveying. We have um, topographic surveying. Um, Saman na siya. Kanang they thought it was a camera. Or naka-experience na mo. Nakakita na mo. Nakapagtuunin nyo. Camera na siya. So, instrumenting na siya for um, genetic engineers. Or, kanang the third picture. GNSS receiver. Ang gamit na nila. Or, um, this portion, the lower left, that is the um, leveling. Uh, leveling. The next is property survey, and lastly is hydrographic survey. So, in all these surveying activities, we are solely interested in one thing. Kung sa ganito? So, we are interested in the collection and measurement of spatial data spatial data. 
Mora dyan ay pinaka-concern sa genetic engineer. Collect and measure ang data, special data, i-process, i-manage, and uh, interpret, and we're going to display it as a maps and other documents. So, we are collecting and measuring the spatial data, but for what purpose? The purpose is to determine the geographic location or spatial position. So, unsa din ang geographic location or spatial position, sir? So, uh, for the definition, uh, geographic location or spatial position refers to an object's position above on or below the surface of the earth. So, ang kanang X, Y, and Z sa kana ng specific point sa earth. No? Example na niya is ang coordinates like um, latitude, longitude, and elevation. Or we have also north things, east things, and um, elevation. So, it could be either again, latitude and longitude for two-dimensional, and east things and north things for two-dimensional, and for three-dimensional, we have incorporated the elevation, as what I have said a while ago. So, the fundamental elements used to derive spatial position. Ang sama ni mga elements para makakuha tayo ng spatial position. First is we have the direction. Example sa direction is the angles like the azimuth or bearing. So, when we say azimuth, it is referred from the, um, it's either no, uh, north or south, no? but in the Philippines, we are referring to um, south. No? And it is uh, 360 degrees no, ang iyahang maximum na angle and for the bearing, we have also the first reference which is the north and south and the secondary reference which is the east and west and ang iyahang maximum angle is 90 degrees second element is the distance so if we have the direction and the distance, for example we have north 30 degrees east and the distance is 30 meters so from that, from your specific point, you will determine that another specific point. So out of that, maka create din ka nga, ah, okay, that is the spatial position of that point. And these elements, these two elements like direction and distance, are can be obtained no, using direct observation and indirect observation. So from the word itself, direct means um, we have a direct contact and indirect so you are done or you are uh, observing and measuring remotely or afar so here is a simple illustration on how do we get the spatial position of for example lat corner number one so we have lat corner one that point in red then we have two reference points and that reference points are known known coordinates na na siya approve na X and Y or North things and East things or latitude and longitude. The first step is we're going to determine first the azimuth. The azimuth from point reference number 1 and uh, the azimuth to the point reference number 2. Next is to get the horizontal angle. After the getting of the horizontal angle, and with the um, another element, which is the distance, then we can now get the lat corner one um, coordinates. So for the basic steps, so mo step, no? Find two reference points whose coordinates are known. Set up a surveying instrument at one of the reference points. So katong point reference one ganina. And backside the reference point, then measure. The horizontal angle to lat corner number one. Having this azimuth and the line connecting to the reference points is equal to the azimuth of the line connecting from the occupied station and lat corner one. So, ang pasabot niya, since na naman tay azimuth na ganina, uh, referred from the point one, padulong sa point two, i add lang nato ang horizontal angle niya. So, that is the azimuth of the lat corner number one. And we're going to measure the distance from the occupied station to that corner number one and lastly uh, based from those measured azimuth and distance 
So, mo to siyang makuha na din name mo ang coordinates. You can compute now the coordinates for that order number 1. So, let's go back to the different method on how we obtain the spatial data. First, we have direct observation. So, in direct observation, the quantity of being measured is directly provided by the measuring instrument or the equipment or as a measured. Example of this one is um, a transit. No? In transit, ang atong un, ato ding makuha nga data is ang angle. No? Atong i-read sa vernier is ang angle. Another one is ang tape, measuring tape. So, it gives you directly uh, data such as distance. Kung gabito niyo mo si, si tape, makakuha din ka diretsyo of distance. And we have also theodolites. Theodolites, mura na po na siyang total station, but it is not equipped with the uh, laser technology which is to determine the distance. So, ang pagkuha sa distance ani is taping gihapon. Muro na yung kalainan niya sa so, total station of the other line. And also, in direct observation, the measured quantity is obtained first hand. So, kung unsay mo hang um, gigamit, kung unsay gamit ang instrument, ang mahatag niya sa inyong alargo is direct data. No computations or any processing involved. Example of this one is using a transit theodolite or total station but it is to determine the azimuth of the line okay since equip man gyapon si total station but sa azimuth lang siya or sa di, sa angle lang siya di siya pwede sa distance kung total station ang istoryahan pero pag theodolite angle sa video hang directly makuha na and distances using the tape measure and another example is using a tape measure again sa kung gusto tinga ganina to determine the distances. In indirect observation, kabalik tara ni siya sa direct observation. So the quantity being measured is indirectly provided by the measuring instrument or equipment. Um, the computations or processing are involved neither internally within the instrument to um, external processing of data. For example, sa kanang doha no, na ay prism sa PCAS or reflector and we have the instrument to determine the um, distances using the total station matawag siya nga indirectly nga naman sir it's because si total station is equipped with the laser technology sa so, akong gisulti pa ganina so muimit na siya muimit na siya o laser or light padulong sa reflector or sa prism and it goes back to the instrument and that instrument si total station uh, makadetect na din na siya nga uh, nibalik na ang light sa iyaha so from the calculations that the distance is equals to the speed of light times the change of time over 2 so muna niya hang uh, formula so the instrument itself is processing o nagcompute na siya internally sa kada nga instrument so that it the distance will calculate or mahatag na din sa inyong ha. So, example na niya, again, total station to measure distances, determining coordinates of points using total station or ang pagkuha na to uh, another coordinates from the known coordinates, so that is indirect observation using a GNSS receiver to determine the coordinates of the points and or and computing distances and directions from the measured coordinate. So, dahil na kayo discuss sir, aha, mo siya mo si Jody C. Sa Geodetic Engineering. So, let us discuss this again. No? To determine the spatial position. So, balik taan ni nga. Figure. No? From this figure, um, to determine the spatial position, we are going to have these two elements, the direction and the distance. So, asa mo sulod si Jody C. For the reference systems or for the earth model. So, kung direction lang ug si distance, two-dimensional lang tanan. No? Mahimu rasa two-dimensional tanan. Mahimong floating ang imuhang coordinates. Mahimong floating ang imuhang points. But, if you are going to apply the reference system and the earth model and the um, knowledge about earth model, so the spatial position now will become geographic coordinates. Mauna nang naatay latitude and longitude. 
It's because na may reference system. For example, sa reference system, the Greenwich Meridian will be the zero longitude and the equator is the zero latitude. So I guess that's it for now. And see you for the upcoming videos of this topic. Keep safe everyone and see you in our next video.